What would you do if you were offered two spouses, an ugly one and a beautiful one? Today on Mythology for Dummies, we'll talk about the gods that led up to Emperor Jimu, the mythical first emperor of Japan. They say he started his rule in 660 BC, and he descended from the sun goddess herself, Amaterasu. And that's why every emperor claims descent from Emperor Jimu and Amaterasu, giving them a divine origin. They were the products of a goddess. The Japanese myths come from two texts, the Kochiki and the Nihon Shoki. The problem is that the stories sometimes differ between the two. For example, in the Nihon Shoki, the palace of the great Kami of the Sea is underwater, while in the Kochiki, there's no mention of it being underwater. Alright, so this video is mostly based on the Kochiki version of events, which is only a little different from the Nihon Shoki version. One day, Amaterasu ordered her son to go down to tame all the kami on earth. At the time, these countless earthly gods were running around all crazy, fighting each other or just being obnoxious. So Amaterasu told her son to go down and teach them some respect. But the guy was scared of those mean earthly kami. So he threw his son under a bus and was like, Oh, I'd love to, but you know who would be a better candidate? My son, Ninigi. With a sigh, Amaterasu sent down Ninigi instead. I feel kind of bad for Amaterasu. Her brothers were huge jerks, and even her son can't do anything right. She gave Ninigi, her grandson, three treasures. A jewel, a mirror, the same mirror that the heavenly gods used to lure her out of her cave, and the sword, Kusanagi, the sword that her brother, Susano, found in the tail of a snake and gifted to her. Amaterasu also sent a group of kami to help him. Decked out in legendary gear and running with a high-level party, Ninigi descended to Earth. On the way, he recruited this one kami that I want to mention just because he's ridiculously awesome. He was 7 feet tall and had a nose 30 inches long. Inside his body was a fire that burned so bright that it made his mouth and eyes glow red. And it made the whole of his butt glow red too. Hey, that's what the story says, don't blame me. The descendants of this group would later become the most important Japanese clans, ancestors of the Japanese people. On Earth, Ninigi took his job of taming the land very seriously. Just kidding, he immediately chased after a girl. He flirted with the daughter of one of the mountain gods. When the mountain god heard of this, he was super happy. He knew that Ninigi was the grandson of Amaterasu. He was so happy that he gave two daughters to Ninigi. One daughter, the beautiful one that Ninigi wanted, was named Flower Blossom Princess. The other one was Long Rock Princess, who was quite ugly. Ninigi wasn't really into Long Rock Princess, so he sent her back to her dad like she was a bad gift. That was really rude. You don't just return Long Rock Princess because you don't like her. That's what regifting is for. The father was enraged. He said, I give you my daughter, Flower Blossom Princess, so your life could flourish and prosper like the blossoming of cherry blossom trees. I gave you my other daughter, Long Rock Princess, so your life would last as long as the rocks. Now that you've rejected her, your prosperity would be as temporary as the blossoming of flowers. And because of this, emperors tended to have short reigns. That's right, Ninigi screwed Japanese emperors all because he judged the book by its cover. After Ninigi and his new wife, Flower Blossom Princess, had spent a night together, she became pregnant. Ninigi immediately accused her of lying with some other man. How could you have become pregnant after only one night together? Indignant about her innocence, she said, If my children are not yours, then may the birth be a disaster. To prove her point, while Flower Blossom Princess was in labor, she set fire to the building she was in and gave birth to three babies amidst the flames. She and the babies got out without the flames even touching them. And why did that prove that the babies were his? Because folk tales. Now, the babies that we care about are the first and the third. The eldest brother was named Hoderi, the youngest Hori. When they grew up, Hoderi, the elder brother, became a great fisherman and he had a magical fish hook that helped him catch fish. Hori became a great hunter and had a magical bow that helped him hunt. Hori was terrible at fishing, so he wanted to borrow his elder brother's fish hook. He said, bro, I want to borrow your magic fish hook. I'll let you borrow my bow. Hori said no. Ooh, good counter, thought Hori. But he kept asking over and over, like a typical annoying younger brother, until Hori had enough and agreed to exchange magical items. 
So with this new fish hook, Hori went out on a boat to catch some fish, and still failed. Looked like the problem was him, not his tools. Even worse, he lost the fish hook. It must have dropped into the sea. When the time came for the brothers to return their magic items, Hori returned the bow. But Hori confessed that okay, he did lose the fish hook. But look, he made a thousand fish hooks from his own sword and offered them instead. His brother was not impressed. You better find my fish hook, or else. Hori went to sulk and cry on the beach. A god happened to walk by. Gods are always popping up around this time. He asked what happened, and after listening to Hori's story, the god suggested he go visit the palace of Ootasumi, the kami of the sea. And so Hori got on a boat and traveled there. He couldn't get into the palace, so he impressed some handmaidens by spitting out a jewel from his mouth at their water pitcher, embedding it to the side of the pitcher. No one could take it out. They went in to show it to their mistress, who emerged from the palace to check out the handsome man with the strong mouth. She was the sea lord's daughter, Toyotama Hime. When Hori and Toyotama Hime saw each other, they instantly fell in love, like the way it normally happens, and got married with the blessing of Owatasumi, the kami of the sea, who turned out to be a dragon. After living there for three years, Hori got homesick, but told Owatasumi that he couldn't return because his brother was being an ass. Being the dragon kami of the sea, Owatasumi called a meeting of all the fishes. Some of the fish were like, "Is that safe?" The dragon thought about it. And created a Zoom meeting instead. He asked if anyone saw this magic fish hook. One bream, which is a fish supposedly, mentioned that it had something stuck in its throat. Turned out it was the fish hook. The bream returned it. Hori was like, "All right, I can go home now," and got to packing. As he was preparing to go, the dragon gave Hori two gifts to punish his brother with: two jewels, one that can raise the water level and one that can lower the water level. With his new water bending powers, Hori returned home and gave the fish hook back to Horeri. But as revenge for being exiled, Hori used the jewels on his brother's rice fields. He would either flood the fields or deny them water, preventing anything from growing. Horeri grew poorer and poorer until he decided to attack Hori. But Hori thoroughly ruined his day by using the water raising jewel to drown him until he begged for forgiveness. And agreed to serve Hori. After the sibling rivalry was resolved, Toyotama Hime, the sea princess, left her palace and came to live with Hori. She soon got pregnant, but when the time came, she forbade her husband to look at her while she gave birth. Hori agreed and looked anyways. He saw his wife turn into a giant birth-giving dragon. Now the translation here is not certain. Some translate it as crocodile or shark, but the dragon translation is the coolest, so I'll stick with that. Afterwards, she was pissed and ashamed that her husband saw her animal form. She took off in a huff and returned to her palace, leaving husband and child. But she did send her sister to help raise the child because she was a good mom. Hori lived for five hundred years. That son of his had four sons of his own. The youngest one would grow up to become Emperor Jimmu, the first emperor of Japan. But that's a story for another day. All right, here's today's quiz question: Which god held down an onamazu with a stone to prevent strong earthquakes? Let me know in the comments. Tomorrow, I will randomly choose a winner from the correct answers, and the winner will get one of these. Good luck. Want more Japanese mythology? Click here. Shout out to the new patrons this week: Gary Burkett the Third, Sayali Vadia, Iglybo, a Pokemon, Maggie the Werido, and Ryota. Thank you so much. You guys keep the channel going. All right, I love you and spread the knowledge.